My name is Axel Sauter. I work as a consultant at the Oslo University Hospital on the, the Department of Anesthesia at the Rikshospitalet. I mainly work with orthopedic patients, both the adult and pediatric patients. Many of these patients have uh, problems with postoperative pain and to treat postoperative pain we use lumbar plexus blocks in many of these patients after orthopedic surgery. We have developed our own ultrasound guided lumbar plexus technique. We call it the shamrock technique and uh, it is quite similar to, to classical techniques for lumbar plexus blocks with um, posterior anterior needle advancements. However, what is uh, special is that we use uh, ultrasound scanning in a transverse plane and that we identify the pattern of a shamrock when scanning the patient. And like this, it is, it is quite easy to identify uh, the surrounding anatomy and the nerves of the plexus and we can uh, obtain good needle visualization when performing the block with this technique. I start with a scan of the anatomy. And I try to direct uh, the probe in direction of the L4 vertebra. And uh, what we can see, we can see the body and the transverse process of L4 and uh, we can see three muscles surrounding the transverse process. On the posterior side, left side in the ultrasound image, we see the erector spinae muscle. Uh, on top of the transverse process, we see the quadratus lumborum. And anteriorly, on the right side of our ultrasound image, we see the psoas muscle. And when I play a little bit with my probe, actually we can see two nerves and we can also clearly see the L3 spinal nerve. When I move my probe slightly cranially, the L3 spinal nerve will disappear within the spinal channel. This happens here. I turn my probe back cordially here the L3 spinal nerve appears again and you see this as a bright hyperechoic structure. To perform the block I want a position where I cannot see the transverse process anymore because I don't want to get in contact with my needle and the transverse process while performing an in-plane needle approach. So I have to move my probe slightly, cordially, and again I try to visualize the nerve. It is not as bright as before, but still I easily can identify the L3 spinal nerve. And quite frequently we can see a tiny artery pulsating on the medial side so this makes us prefer the lateral side of the nerve for our needle position. Uh, I can clearly see the nerve. I still see the three muscles of the shamrock, uh, the three leaves uh, that are surrounding the, the shaft, the, the transverse process in the previous image. Uh, now the transverse process has disappeared and I will draw a line representing the intersection of the ultrasound beam and the skin of the patient. And my point of needle insertion has to be on this line when I perform an in-plane needle approach, approximately three or four centimeter away from the midline. A sterile skin scrub was performed and uh, now I do some local anesthetic injections at the point of needle insertion. I 
inject local anesthetics. We see the nerve. We cannot see the transverse process and we cannot yet see the needle. And the, the challenging moment is to get the needle into the image, the first uh, centimeters. But now you also can see the needle. Zero point five, and now I, I would like to inject my local anesthetics, and you can see the local anesthetic spread. I inject five. inject more local anesthetics and now you can see that the nerve is surrounded by local anesthetics. I perform frequent aspirations while injecting the local anesthetic. And I Perform a scan a little bit up and you see now several nerves surrounded by local anesthetic and I scan also cordially and you can see a nice local anesthetic distribution. When it comes to the local anesthetic volume, we would recommend uh, 25 to 30 ml of uh, ropivacaine, 0.5 percent. This is according to a recent uh, dose finding studies that we have performed uh, at our department. We don't have data for other local anesthetics, but I would expect that also a relatively high volume is needed to cover all the nerves within the lumbar plexus.